Hi guys, uh, trust you are well. I uh, hope uh, that you're enjoying this time with your families and uh, that you're spending this time wisely. Hi everybody, it's really good to be with you this evening. We just want to share a few things that are on our hearts from a prayer perspective and we can't wait to see you all again. We're missing you all so much. Uh, when I was uh, asked to lead some of the prayer this evening, I thought uh, I would uh, put some things into perspective. I um, spend a lot of time uh, in the Word and I uh, just thought I would uh, share some things with you. So all through human history, humanity has endured some really troubled times. We know that we've had two great world wars where almost 95 million people died. We've had major pandemics uh, in our history where uh, just in two of them, we lost 150 million people. And we also know that even in times of peace, that trials are not, not anything new because for those that follow Christ, we live with persecution throughout the world. And even in times of, of when things are going well, there's still this element where people go through difficult circumstances. What does not change, however, is who God is mm -hmm. and also what His Word commands us to do. Mm -hmm. And so I just want to encourage you with uh, two scriptures in Isaiah 40, 25 to 26. This is who God says He is. To whom will you compare me or who is my equal, says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes and look to heaven. Who created these? Who brings out the starry host one by one and calls each one by name? Because of his great power and his mighty strength, not one of them is missing. And then we see in Isaiah 40, we actually read further what God says about himself. Who has measured out the waters in the hollow of his hand? Or with the breath of his hand, he has marked out the heavens. Who has held the dust of the earth in the basket? Who has weighed the mountains on scales or hills in a balance? Who has understood the mind of God, who has instructed him as his counselor? Whom did the Lord consult to enlighten him, and who taught him the right way? Who was it who taught him knowledge and showed him the path of understanding? And so we see God is who God is, and he is absolutely sovereign. And this has not caught him by surprise. Mm. And so there is purpose in everything that actually happens. Mm. However, how we react in these times of difficulty are very, very important. And so all the way through, I've been noticing a very strong thread throughout Scripture, is that God is who God is, but God has called us to live in a certain way. And I want to just read briefly from 1 Kings chapter 9, verse 4, and this is God with David. And so this is what God requires of David. And so he says to him, this is what I want you to do, is I want you to walk before me with an integrity of heart, to observe my decrees and laws and do everything that I command you. And so this applies not only to kings and presidents and, na and nation subjects, but it applies especially to those who have been redeemed and are now called the children of God. And so this evening for us when we pray, I want us to really keep the main thing the main thing. And the first one main thing that I want us to focus on is that we to honor God and to understand that He has purpose in this time. And so, Father, I pray that we would firstly understand that we would see you as God Almighty. Yes. We would understand you as the sovereign God yes, with a wisdom that far outweighs our, our human understanding. Mm -hmm. That we'd see you for who you are, Lord, and that you work in time frames that encapsulate eternity. And that you make the present impact eternity. And what happens in the present, Lord, does have an impact on eternity. And so you work all things out according to your purpose and plan. I pray, Lord, that we would trust you. I pray, Lord, that we would recognize that when we look around us, we do not quite understand some of the things that are going on mm. or why certain things are happening at this yeah. specific time. But God, you have purpose. God, you have predestined the beginning and the end and everything in between. And so we have to trust in you because you are almighty God mm -hmm. and you have decreed that which is to come. Nothing that happens in this present is outside your control yes. and it is only allowed to happen because you've allowed it to happen. Yes. And so God, our trust and our rest and our hope is in you. I pray, Lord, that also that we will love you and that we will keep you as the main, main object 
of our affections, Lord. In this time where we have time on our hands, it would be easy for us to get distracted and to chase after other things and to long for other things. But I pray, God, that for every single one of your children, that we, O oh God, we would find you as the object and the prize of our affection and that we would love you with all our heart, all our strength and all our might and that we would seek your face and that we would seek your presence, O oh God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We praise your name. Thank you. The second thing that I want us to focus on is that we ask him for a love of his word. The reality is, is that we will not live the life that we call to live unless we have a love for God's word. Because it is God's word that guides us. It is God's word that strengthens us. It is God's word that puts the boundaries and keeps us in safe places. And so God, I pray right now that you give your children a love for your word, that we would seek your word, Lord, that we would seek your ways, that we get to know you through your word, that we would recognize that we need your word mm. more than we need your, uh, your, the daily food that we take. Mm. And so, God, I pray that we will start the day, firstly, with a spiritual food, that we'd spend time in your presence, yes, that we'd seek your guidance and that we'd seek your direction through your word. There is nothing in this life, Lord, that is not covered by your word. There is nothing that we will not walk through, God, that is not covered by your word. Mm -hmm. And so, God, I pray that you would strengthen us. I pray, God, that you'd give us the ability to be obedient, that we would be able to recognize that we are to seek you and seek you alone, O oh God. Thank you, Lord. Pray that we were faithful, Lord. And, Lord, before we ask for more, and we know that we have needs. I pray, Lord, that you teach us to be a people that are faithful with that which you've already given us. Teach us to be faithful, Lord. Teach us to be faithful, I pray, in every single area in our lives. Mm. The third thing that was very evident for me is that the leaders that God has put in place in the nation how they lead the nation and how they lead the nation in accordance with what we've just prayed is very, very important to, for us as a people. All the way through the history of Israel, we see that it went well with the nation when the kings actually served God and when they honored God. And so I want to pray for our president. Mm. I want to pray that God will give him wisdom and God will give him discernment. But mostly I pray that God would capture his heart and that he would seek him with all his heart. Father, I pray that in this time when there is so much different counsel coming from all different parts of the world, I pray for our president. I pray, God, that he would seek you mm -hmm. and that he would seek your face and that he'd seek your counsel. Yes, and I pray, Lord, that you give him wisdom and that you grant him courage to lead us in the time of this. And we bless your name and we thank you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you guys. May God bless you richly and keep you. And we'll see you all soon.